Welcome to the Sylvan Australia podcast, where we talk everything rural lifestyle. Okay, welcome to another edition of the Sylvan Australia podcast. Today I am with Sylvan Australia Spraying Specialist, David Carr. David, thanks for joining us. No problem, Nick. Good, good to be with you. Hey, look, David, tell us a bit about yourself and um, how long you've been at Sylvan and, and just, yeah, a little bit about yourself and what you do at Sylvan Australia. Sure thing. So I've been at Sylvan since 1994, which makes me coming up to 25 years this November. Started off uh, in Melbourne as an account manager looking after half of Victoria and 15, 16 years ago nearly um, had the opportunity to move to the Queensland office and uh, did that and since then I've been uh, account manager in Queensland but now am essentially the um, spraying product specialist for the North Re- northeast region and that includes or starts down at Tamworth in northern New South Wales and goes up to the top of Queensland and also across into the Northern Territory where I give the other account managers a, um, a hand wherever they need it or need me to, to be involved in their uh, activities. And part of your role is the spraying specialist and I know from my own personal experience you're, you're very experienced in that in that field. So just tell us a bit about your skills and in particular when it comes to spraying. So I was actually brought up on a, an apple orchard in New Zealand and did my university horticulture studies over there before moving to uh, to Australia in 1983 to take over a role as a, an orchard manager on a um, pit fruit orchard down in Victoria. And uh, after doing that for 11 years, I, I joined Sylvan and basically jumped the fence, if you like, from being a user of the products to being uh, a seller and, and servicing uh, person of the, with our products. So uh, my background's always been in horticulture and in um, spraying in particular. I've got an interest in that side of things. And um, with my sort of orcharding experience, I found that um, I could relate those experiences into the into the field pretty easily. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, took up the, the technical technical side of uh, of looking after the Sylvan products out in the field. Thanks for sharing that with us. Look, David, today's podcast we want to talk a little bit about the APVMA and their new mandate on the two four D products. Uh, I'm just going to read uh, a background. It's a this is a statement from the APVMA. It reads, incidents of spray drift damage attributed to 2,4-D have been reported for a number of years with significant incidents in the last two summer spray seasons. And the APVMA has been working closely with grower groups, state and territory authorities, and other stakeholders to develop a new label instructions to reduce the likelihood of off-target damage due to spray drift. We consider that currently approved 2,4-D labels do not provide adequate instructions to effectively mitigate risk associated with spray drift. As of the 3rd of October 2018, the new 2,4-D label instructions came into effect and old labels have been suspended. Users of 2,4-D must comply with the new label instructions, even if they are using products with the old labels. So the mandate goes on to include a requirement not to spray in inversion conditions and additional information on recognising inversion conditions, downward mandatory no spray zones for both aquatic and terrestrial off-target vegetation including sensitive crops, gardens, landscaping vegetation, protected native vegetation or protected animal habitat, a requirement to use nozzles producing droplets no smaller than very coarse spray quality category, mandatory record keeping requirements and advisory statements about spray application over summer. So that's a bit of a a handful there. So David, are you able to talk us through, I mean, at the end of the day, I think what the the APVMA are trying to say is that the application of 2,4-D products needs to be done uh, under strict guidelines as of the 3rd of October in 2018. Are you able to elaborate a little bit more on some of those statements they make there? Yeah, certainly, Nick. So 
the um, the APVMA has recognised, as they've said in their statement, that uh, the potential for off-target damage with, with uh, formulations of 2,4-D have been um, increasing over the last few few uh, years, and, and over, especially over the summer sa um, spraying season. So they have basically mandated um, a set of requirements for applicators of 2,4-D uh, off of last year, 3rd of October. So by specifying nozzles that produce uh, large droplets, i.e. larger than very coarse or very mm -hmm. coarse and larger, they um, have recognised that by using those larger droplets, then the drift potential for these products going on to uh, other unwanted crops is being significantly reduced. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and as well as the specifying different nozzles with bigger droplets, they've also um, specified some extra uh, monitoring and record keeping and also some uh, other instructions in terms of timing and also recognising when a surface temperature inversion uh, condition has occurred. Yeah. So, David, tell us a little bit. They, they, call, they, they call a droplet very coarse. Are you able to explain, I mean, at the end of the day, a uh, uh, very coarse droplet is mandated by an ISO standard, that's correct? Yeah, well, it's not a, an ISO standard. It's actually um, either the American uh, Society of Agricultural and Biological Engineers standards S572.1 okay. or British Crop Protection Council uh, standards. So essentially an ISO because between those two bodies then that's the internationally recognised um, standards that that, uh, that everybody goes with. Mm, okay. a, a very coarse nozzle um, is measured or all droplet sizes are actually measured by <clears throat> various in, uh, pieces of equipment um, and most of those are laser analysers so they spray the, um, the liquid or the, the water and a, an adjuvant through a laser beam and the laser uh, recognises the size of the droplets and it puts them into a category ranging from extra fine right through to ultra coarse. And uh, the normal um, numerical value is termed as being the VMD or the volume mean diameter, meaning that 50% of the droplets in a particular spray stream will be larger than the figure that's quoted and 50% will be smaller than the figure quoted. Yeah, okay. So for a very coarse nozzle, uh, depending on the Im instrument that's been used to uh, to measure the, the droplet size, usually ranges from around about 350 microns up to about 500. The mandate requires the application to be using a very coarse or larger droplet spectrum. We're kind of limited in the number of nozzles we can use at a reasonable pressure, isn't that correct? So we, we're kind of stuck to a TTI nozzle or a TTI 60 nozzle. So those two nozzles there generate, at, at worst, I guess you could say, a very coarse uh, droplet, even at the higher pressure. So the TTI from <coughs> nozzle from TJET is a, a hybrid air-inducted anvil type nozzle, mm -hmm. meaning that it draws liquid through a pre-orifice in the top of the nozzle body and it also has two air holes on the side of the body which are able to draw air into the, the body of the nozzle by a venturi action. Mm -hmm. uh, this creates a, a low pressure area in the body of the nozzle and droplets are formed that have air bubbles essentially inside them, so they're air-included nozzles. Mm -hmm. And uh, by having droplets of a bigger mass, then they have less potential to to, uh, to drift. Yep, yep. The TTI is one that has um, ultra-coarse and extra-coarse droplets right through its range from size 0.15 up to 0.6, and at all of the 
pressure settings. For those listeners that are out there and probably wondering and trying to envisage what that looks like, there's actually a video we've got on the Sylvan Australia uh, YouTube channel and also on our Facebook page that you can go to. And we actually compare the TTI alongside of an XR nozzle. So an XR nozzle is your base, I guess you could call it your base nozzle. Um, and we compare that side by side with a TTI and you can see the difference in in droplet size. We also do the same with the TTI 60. So the TTI 60 is is a 60 degree difference between has a two two fans that come out. Uh, one's a forward a leading fan and the other one is a rear or a backwards facing fan. So it hits the crop at at more of a at, a, at an angle from the front and then from the rear. Um, and again, that nozzle there, we compare that to an XR, and you can see the the vast differences in droplet sizes. David, are you able to also tell us how people can size these nozzles using the nozzle chart um, in our in our literature? The um, the cap that is fits the TTI nozzle is, has the new part number one one triple four three. And that's uh, made from Celcon, which is an acetyl type uh, plastic, and uh, certainly available in a variety of colours to suit uh, whatever people want to, to fit up with their, to make identification easy on their boom. Mm -hmm. and, um, as well as the cap, you need to put, be putting in the, uh, the ga rubber gasket in, in behind that as well. Yep. But certainly that double one, triple four, three dash whatever number you choose for the colour uh, is the one to fit with the TTI nozzles. Mm. And so you to stay with the TTI um, 60, it's a, a complete set, so you don't have to worry about a separate uh, separate cap to go with it. Sure. But, now those nozzles are available at all Sylvan, are available through your Sylvan dealer, through your Sylvan master dealer or selected dealer, so if you need to change your nozzles, uh, head on over to your Sylvan master dealer or selected dealer and they'll be able to uh, source those for you. David, while we're talking nozzles, I guess it's a good time as we, we're getting into autumn now to talk about calibrating nozzles and just some general nozzle maintenance. Um, is there anything you can add there? Yes, yeah, certainly. If, and as you going back to your point previously about trying to determine which of the nozzles you need to use for a particular application, mm -hmm. if you've got the nozzle charts from our literature or from the TJET uh, manual, the easiest way to uh, to work with those is to simply run across the top uh, column, which gives you your ground speed in kilometres an hour. Uh, pick the speed that you want to spray at, so say it might be 10 kilometres an hour, and then go down that row in the table until you come to the application rate you want to apply in litres per hectare. So say it's going to be um, 100, around about 100 litres to the hectare, and then go back across the column, back to the left-hand side of the chart, and that will give you the colour of the nozzle and the size that you need to use, and also the pressure that you need to run your sprayer at to achieve the application you, you want at the speed that you want to travel. Mm -hmm. yep. There's a chart of each, for each of those, there's a chart um, available for each of the different nozzle types um, but typically if you're looking for a, a particular color of nozzle then that color according this is the, where the ISO color stand comes in that particular color if it's a yellow nozzle uh, doesn't matter whether it's a TTI or a TTI 60 or the XR or an AIXR it's a yellow nozzle, it will be putting out the same litres per minute at the same pressure, irrespective of the type. Yep. No, thanks for that, David. Um, and in terms of nozzle maintenance, um, look, we, we, both you and I, go visit growers over, over our time, and we do see varying levels of nozzle ma no, maintenance, sorry, uh, or the lack thereof. Um, is there any tips you can offer people in terms of nozzle maintenance? Yeah, absolutely, Nick. So the main thing is um, that people need to be checking that the, the nozzles that they have on their boom sprayer are actually putting out what the chart tells them it should be putting out. So mm. to set their sprayer at a particular pressure, uh, then 
measure the amount of liquid that's coming out of the nozzles into a calibrated jug over a certain time, usually a minute is the best, and then relate that back to the application chart. If that nozzle is putting out 10% more than what the value on the chart says, it should be replaced. Yep. And if you go run across your boom spray and you find more than two or three nozzles that are outside that 10% range, then replace the whole set of the boom spray. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. We can, yeah. we can, you know, certainly vouch for that. We get a number of growers call up and say that they're, you know, putting on their spraying at a set pressure, but then they, you know, there's, there's way, there's more fluid going out or the, the spray is not, they're not getting the tank full that they expect to. So, um, yeah, we get that quite often. And then invariably it is related to nozzle wear and the, the nozzles have worn considerably over a number of years and they, they require replacing. So the, the, the nozzle is probably the most important piece of equipment on an actual boom sprayer, mm. but it's usually the thing that's neglected the most. That's right. Uh, yeah. Over application, over a farmer's complete spraying regime can run into a lot of dollars that have been wasted by over application. For those of people that are interested in what we've spoken about today on the podcast, they can head to the APVMA website and have a look have a look at the information there. If you need to know where that is, go to our Sylvan Facebook page or go to the Sylvan YouTube channel. We have links to the APVMA statement and the, the mandatory statement there, and they can find it from there. And there's also a, an accompanying video that we've made that just explains a little bit, and you have a visual representation of what these nozzles can do. So yeah, head on over to the YouTube channel at Sylvan Australia or our Facebook page of the same name, Sylvan Australia, and you can find all the information there. You can also find this information at www.sylvan.com.au or give our customer service team a call on 1300 745 826 or 1300 Sylvan. So, look, David, thanks for your time and coming on. We'll have you on uh, uh, throughout the year. So hope, hopefully you had a good time and uh, we'll have you back shortly. No trouble at all, Nick. My pleasure. All right. Thanks, David. Thanks for joining us. All right. No worries.